Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the humoral immunity, or which is also known as the antibody mediated immunity. Okay? So the concept of humoral immunity was developed based on the analysis of antibacterial activity of serum components. And the seminal work was done by Hans Buckner in um, early 70s. He found out that components in the blood or the serum, and he termed them as alexins, they have protective roles against pathogenic attack. So he thought these soluble substances which are present in serum or body fluids, they could be um, very important to provide immunity to an individual. Later on, Paul Elrich termed them as complement proteins. And now we know that complement proteins are very important for our immunity, right? And that's a part of broadly like the innate immune system. Now these concepts was the pillars for humoral immunity. What we know today about humoral immunity came from this early work by Paul Elrich and many colleagues. Now antibodies are versatile effector molecules in terms of immune response. So let's see that how antibodies can be useful tools for the immune system to encounter one pathogen or to neutralize one infection. So first mechanism by which antibody works is by blocking the pathogen entry into the cell. It is also termed as neutralization. We'll elaborate on all of these points gradually. Secondly, by coating the pathogen surface with antibody make these pathogens weak or obscenized. Later on, they can be killed by antibody mediated cytotoxicity or ADCC mechanism. Lastly, antibodies can also help in complement fixation, which would ultimately destroy the pathogen. So all of the, these are the possible mechanisms by which the humoral immune response can be triggered. So let's take all of these points into account in a lot more detail. So let's say there is a virus and the virus need to interact with this receptor to gain entry in the cell. Now, if the virus cannot interact with the receptor, there is no question that the virus can enter the cell. And many of the antibodies which are against these viral surface antigens can block the virus, but by not letting it interact with the cell receptor. And as a result, the viral entry is prevented. So this is one of the framework by which antibodies could be very useful to boost the immune response. Secondly, there could be other mechanisms. For example, opsonized pathogens. For example, a virus is opsonized or coated with antibodies and that can be uptaken by several cells such as dendritic cells because dendritic cells can phagocytose, right? Other cells which has FC receptor now, FC receptor is against the tail of the antibody, which is known as FC region. These FC receptors can ultimately lead to endocytosis of the whole opsonized pathogen by neutrophil, macrophages, NK cells, or even dendritic cells. So quite a lot of cells which has FC receptor can uptake these opsonized pathogen and can neutralize the threat. Okay. The next method by which the pathogen can be neutralized is antibody mediated complement fixation. So on the surface proteins of a bacteria, let's say, antibodies can bind. And antibodies can serve as a platform for binding classical components of the complement system. Complement proteins such as C1Q can bind to the end of the antibody and ultimately with a complicated cascade event, it would create membrane pores in the bacteria. As a result, the bacteria would be lysed and there would be a pressure disbalance building up. Overall, the bacteria would be lysed and the bacteria would be dead. So this is how complement mediated lysis of a pathogen can take place with the help of antibodies. Okay, so we at least learned about what are the possible ways by which humoral immune response can work. So let's talk about the potential of the antibodies in terms of neutralizing pathogens or complement fixation. 
So if we talk about complement fixation, then IgM has higher potential than IgG version because IgM can interact with a lot more antigen simultaneously than IgG, right? So it is isotype dependent and also affinity dependent, right guys? Now, let me tell you that these kind of immunity can also be transferred from mom to the baby because when the uh, baby is there in the inside the mom's womb, then IgG antibodies from mother's body can travel across the placenta and can move into the newborn and that can give them immunity. Also, IgA secreted in the cold strum can provide immunity to the newborn in the initial days. So these kind of immunity can be transmitted from mother to the baby, right? Now let's talk about the kinetics of these kind of humoral immune response. In that, we are going to take a simple example. Let's say we are exposed by a pathogen, okay? Now immediately antibody production does not happen. So it takes a little bit of time, approx 10 days when the antibody uh, generation starts. And initially, the antibodies are IgM category or IgM isotype. Later on, IgG antibodies are produced. And it takes almost 10 days after pathogen exposure. Uh, from pathogen exposure, it takes 10 days for this response to happen. You must be wondering why. Why there is a delay, why there is late, and why this humoral immune system is so slow. So let me tell you the reason behind this lag, okay? So imagine there is a rusty nail and which is pricking in your skin skin and there is some amount of pathogens, let's say bacteria or virus, gained access inside your body. So just beneath your body there are many antigen presenting cells like macrophages and dendritic cells which would recognize the pathogen but ultimately it has to take the pathogen, grind that pathogen up and display its pathogenic uh, determinants on the MHC molecules. Then these dendritic cells can migrate all along the blood vessels and it can go to the army base camp which is the lymph node. Now inside the lymph node it would interact with the T cells and it would activate the T cells, right? T cells would then activate the B cells. Now after B cell is activated quickly some amount of ant uh, B cells would be produced into plasma cells. Some amount of B cells would be instantly produced, instantly converted to a plasma cell. Now the plasma cell would secrete the antibody that can go to the circulation. But eventually the B cell which is activated would get expanded clonally, there would be clonal expansion, they would proliferate massively and when time comes they can eventually mature into antibody producing plasma cells. And that this process is known as differentiation. In between this process there are many fine tunings which would enhance the affinity of these antibodies which are produced and also there would be different isotype switching reactions happening in this place but overall this whole process this complicated process takes quite a lot of time that's why there is a lag in between the pathogenic exposure from uh, from the pathogenic exposure to the antibody production so there is a lag of 10 days and that is why we see these responses are specific but a bit slower because there is antigen detection there is antigen transport to the lymph node and there would be differentiation of the B cell and then only the antibody can be secreted into the serum, right? So this is overall uh, why, this is the reason for which the humoral immune response is a bit slower. Now let's quickly revise that what we learned. So we learned humoral immune response have different kind of uh, ways by which it can work. For example, one effect was neutralization where antibody binds to the pathogen and kind of neutralize it, either prevent it from entering a host cell or kind of obscenize it such that it becomes weak, right? This is one method. Second method is like, uh, second method we already discussed, which is like actually obscenization. Now coating the pathogen surface with antibodies would make the pathogen very weak and not allowing it to interact with the cell surface receptor such that it cannot get inside the cells. And lastly, there could be complement fixation. If there is complement fixation, there could be complement mediated lysis of these cells, right? And ultimately, there is antibody dependent cytotoxicity. Now, opsonized pathogens can be uptaken by several cells, like, like I said, neutrophil, macrophage, NK cells, or dendritic cells. And as a result, what would happen? The pathogen would be neutralized. So, 
when we talked about humoral immunity, we have to keep in mind all of these possible ways by which humoral immune response can work. And I hope you enjoyed this video. This was an overview of humoral immunity. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And do let me know in the comment. I mean, do let me know in the comment how you like my videos. Thanks you. Thank you guys.